Well, hello everybody. It's October, so um, you know what that means. It's time for cheesy Halloween themed videos. <laughs> and as such, I welcome you all into my library. I um, I found it. Tonight we will be perusing these wicked tomes and pages I've collected for all you lovely people and having a little bit of a story time. Now, I'm sure you all know what creepy pastas are if you spend any time on the internet, but if not, they're short form horror stories focused around games and other such types of media. They're notoriously, um, really good. As with any decently sized media property, Don't Starve has a healthy collection of spooky spaghettis, and today I have procured a healthy handful of spine chilling stories for you all. So sit back, turn off the lights, get your favourite scary beverage, as we start with the first story of the night. I got a steam key of Don't Starve Together at a garage sale for two dollars. The man really wanted me to have it for some reason. I have been playing Don't Starve Together for 2000 hours now, and I've never seen something like what just happened to me. I will not be playing the game until Clay gives me an explanation for what just happened. I was playing on my Walter world when I finally got to day 5000. I was extremely happy and wanted to go to day 10,000, but it looks like it won't happen soon. I was getting some berries when I noticed a door surrounded by trees and bishops. I put on my football helmet and killed all the bishops with my slingshot. I looked at the door closer and found that it was Maxwell's door from Don't Starve. I clicked on it and it said, Doorway to Adventure. You're about to step into a long, garduous journey to find Charlie. You will need to survive five worlds, each randomly generated to present new challenge. Should you die, you will be killing an innocent child, but lose all your progress on the journey. I thought that sentence was weird, but I thought it was just some developer playing a trick on me. I decided not to go through the portal and went back to my base. When I go to my base near spawn, Walter said, I want to go on an adventure. He did this every time the day started for 1000 days, so I just decided to go through the portal. I equipped my torch and made my way to the portal. I clicked on it and pressed a go. The game said, you've made the right choice the first time, and cut to black. I heard sounds of screaming, obviously from a child. Then I heard stabbing noises, and then I spawned in chapter 1. But it was different. Walter was looking straight at the camera, and Maxwell was saying, Why did you let him in? Over and over again for two minutes, until the screen cut to black and he disappeared. I found three of the four wooden thing pieces, and when I found the last one, it spawned a deer clops. I wanted to fight him, but when I shot a single pebble from my slingshot, he died instantly. I thought it was a weird joke, but Walter looked at the camera and said, He thought he could kill me, dumbass. <laughs> I thought that was... <laughs> I thought that was a weird thing for Walter to say, but I kept playing. Chapter 2 had Walter and Maxwell acting weird again, but this time, Maxwell was saying, Please stop, please stop, please stop, over and over again. I ignored it and got to Chapter 3. Walter was looking under the camera again, but Maxwell was saying, He's only growing stronger. Please stop this. You're going to kill me. I ignored it, assuming Maxwell was trying to trick me again. I got to chapter 4, and this time Maxwell said, I beg you, please stop this. You will die, and everyone you know will die. He is real, and no one can stop him. Don't free him, my name. I was very disturbed at this point, but I thought he got my name from my PC. I kept going until I found Misery Toadstool Guardian the last teleportator piece. I shot him once with the slingshot and he died instantly. Walter looked at the camera and said, We will be free. Nothing will stop us now. They will all die. Once I got the last teleportato complete, I pressed a button and nothing happened. Walter looked right at me and said, We are finally free, Wobi. Then my game crashed. I decided that was enough for me and went to bed. Then I heard knocking on my door outside, with some barking, likely from a dog. The knocking has been non-stop for three hours now, with weird horn noises coming from it. 
I'm writing this as this is happening, and I'm going to open the door. I just wanted it people to know my story. Later on in the thread, the original poster posted this image. Oh man, that was, um, that was something alright. Are you all scared enough yet? Your bones chilled? Your spines rattled? Your horns swoggled? Well, I hope not, because we're only getting started. Let's put this story, um, over here for now, and let's have a look at... Ah! This one seems interesting. Quite a peculiar looking one. I don't remember this being in my library before. Uh, no matter. Shall we begin? It happened when I least expected it. I started to play Don't Starve Together after a long day at the office, and chose Barley because I had trouble surviving with Wilson. He is bad at finding food, and I don't care about his beard. Barley starts with two potatoes, which are very good for hunger. While I was playing him, I found a lot of berry bushes, and was able to make it to day five for the first time. But when I did, Warley turned to the screen and said, We have to get started on making dinner. I didn't know what that meant, so I just kept playing, assuming that it was his quote for when the sun was setting. On day six, I decided to go to the desert to get tumbleweeds, but I got attacked by a hound on the way and he bit me and I was at one HP, but then the screen went black and I heard the sound of a knife. When the screen came back on, the hound was gone, but an item called Dark Ingredient was on the ground where it was. I picked it up, and it didn't appear in the inventory, which I thought was weird, but I kept playing out of curiosity. This happened three more times, with three other creatures, a beefalo, a spider, and a pengal. At this point, I had picked up the dark ingredient four times. It was at this point when Wiley turned to the screen and said, That is enough. It got to the dusk of day six. I placed down my trusty portable crockpot ready to cook another delicious meal when I noticed that my inventory had been filled with the four dark ingredients. All of my other items were gone. My hunger had also been dropped very low, so I needed to eat or Warley would starve to death and die. I went up to the crockpot and placed all four dark ingredients inside and then clicked the cook button. There was a pop-up that I'd never seen before that said, Are you sure you want to do this? This cannot be undone. I clicked yes, and the crockpot started to cook. As it cooked, the crockpot set itself on fire, which cast enough light that I was able to make it through the night. When morning came, the crockpot disappeared. My hunger had been set back to full, so I decided to continue exploring. I gathered enough twigs and grass before dusk to make a torch so that I wouldn't get bited by Charlie. But since Wiley can't eat food without a crockpot, I was slowly losing hunger. I wouldn't be able to last more than a few days. When dusk came, I pulled out my torch and began to walk towards the portal. When I got there, however, I couldn't believe my eyes. Wiley's crockpot was still there, still cooking the meal from before. However, it looked close to finishing. When the night started, the crockpot finished the meal. The lid popped off, revealing a set of teeth and a long, black tongue. The stand for the pot turned into a set of spider legs, and it began to walk slowly towards Warley. I ran, still holding my torch so that Charlie wouldn't be able to eat me. The crockpot spider gradually sped up, getting faster and faster, but staying outside my torch like a stagehand. It drew closer and closer, until I was back to the very edge of the world. The crockpot spider stopped and stared at Warley. My torch was at 30%. Warley said, I can't do this forever. He was right. My inventory had been emptied again. The torch went out. The screen went dark. All I heard was the sound of the crockpot jumping at Warley. And then the game crashed. I attempted to reopen it, but all the application showed was a picture of the crockpot spider, covered in blood. Warley's blood. I won't be playing the game again. I didn't know that it was this scary past day five. Sometimes, when I close my eyes at night, I can still hear the clicking of the crockpot's wooden legs and the gnashing of its tongue. 
A friend of mine called me the other day and told me that on their computer Warley had been removed from the character list. It was at this point that I knew Warley had eaten his last meal. Okay, that one was a, a little bit better. I, I mean, that was absolutely horrific. These don't starbers really know how to cook up a good scare, don't they? You know, my library is ever-expanding, so if any of you delightful lot have any stories you'd wish to add to it, then send them my way the usual methods. But we still have more stories for tonight, though, don't we? How about, um, mm, this one? Human Frog was found in the game. Human Frog is too OP. Free shoots Abigail in wooden armor and helmet. Please nerf. Hashtag Human Frog too overpowered. What? Uh, okay, I have no idea how that one got in there. Though saying that might be the best one we're gonna see tonight at this rate. Ah, but come on. How about we stop messing around and sink our teeth into a classic one? One you've probably all tasted before, and one that's older than Don't Starve Together itself. This baby is nine years old. Ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, it is with utmost pride I present to you... This all happened about a month ago, and just remembered it. I will not be playing Don't Starve Again until that thing is out of my game. I had finally survived until day 1000 after playing as Wilson. I had entire rooms of food, loot and armour. I was getting manure from my world savannah when I noticed something that wasn't there before. Long piece of land going out to the ocean made of wooden tiles. I assumed it was supposed to be a bridge and followed it. It took around 10 in-game days to get to the end. About half of my supplies were gone at that point. At the end was a small island. There was a fire pit and a divining rod surrounded by lumpy evergreens. I walked up to the pit and the divining rod started to talk. It said, Say pal, things are going great for you. I got more knowledge in store if you want it. And a yes or no option appeared. I assumed the person was Maxwell after seeing the forbidden knowledge video. I decided to click no which caused it to say this line. So you don't trust me, I see. If you ever change your mind, the offer stands. I went back to my camp thinking it was a huge waste. I went to bed seeing as it was getting late. I went back the next morning as overnight I could help but think what it could be. I went back to the island and said yes. As expected, I got tricked. The voice said, <laughs> You fall for it again. The screen went pitch black, and when it came back up again, Wilson was in a room with none of his items and his beard shaved. A campfire was at embers. I tried to walk to the left, but it was just stone wall. Red text appeared saying, Wilson, why don't you meet your new roommate? He has been waiting for you for some time now. <laughs> Once the text went away, a set of glowing red eyes appeared from across the campfire. Wilson started to hold his head like characters do when they go insane and kept repeating, Wake me up, please, and can't you hear me? At this point, I was disturbed as it seemed a bit messed up for Don't Starve. The fire eventually burned out and my health was set to one. Wilson kept saying his lines as a ticking clock was heard. It ticked three times before the voices said, Time's up. I heard a scream through my headphones obviously of a live human. My game crashed and there was a new file on my desktop. It was a picture file with no name. I clicked on it and it was a picture of Wilson's mutilated dead body, plastered to the wall by a black substance I could only assume was nightmare fuel. I felt like vomiting. I was wondering if this was a hidden addition or some kind of sick joke. I went back into the game on the same world. I was back at my camp. It was dusk for roughly five seconds before it was night. I made a fire as fast as I could, accidentally maxing it. A message appeared saying, The Gru no longer fears the light of day. I thought to myself, what? A few seconds later, a roar sounded. I heard my tough trap entrance go off, 
I got a torch and went to see what it was. It was horrible. An emasculated black creature with demonic red eyes on two legs with large claws just standing there. I examined it and Wilson said, It's not scared anymore. Oh God. I went back and got an amulet to kill it. It was morning and it was still there, just watching. I wanted to see how strong it was before I tried to fight it, so I opened the console and spawned in a Deerclops. The Deerclops died in one hit. The Gru waited about 20 hits or so before attacking the Deerclops, meaning it had a lot of health. I went back and decided I would wait until it loses interest. I gave up after I was down to my last meaty stew after a good amount of days spent on the game. Every 20 days or so in the game during that time, Wilson would say, I'm only delaying the inevitable. Wow. Just... Wow. What can I say except that was the most beautiful thing I've ever read. Start to finish, back to front, it was a roller coaster I could never pull myself off of. Utterly perfect. But I believe that's where our stories for tonight end. They've been a blast, to put it lightly. A massive thank you to everyone for their stories. They really made my night. I hope these stories have well and truly startled all of you tonight as well. Let me know if there's any spooky tales of your own that you'd love for me to cover. But for now, I gotta go and, um, clean out some of these books. Uh, take care, everybody, and have a lovely night. Bye-bye.